passkeys, and disaster planning. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. There's been a lot of, I'll call it just fear, uncertainty, and doubt, right? FUD. When it comes to understanding exactly what passkeys are and how they will pragmatically be used in the future. Honestly, I think they're awesome and I use them whenever I can. But there are a number of misconceptions about exactly what it means to use a passkey and what that implication then is in situations like disaster planning. Here's the question I got. I've been thinking about using passkeys instead of passwords. A practical matter that arises is that after my death, you'll have guessed that I'm not a young man, is how can my son gain access to the mass of stuff, financial, legal, photos, etc., on my PC? My immediate thought is that I'd better keep using a password manager and passwords. Is there an answer to this problem? Absolutely, yes. But unfortunately, the question itself kind of indicates a somewhat misunderstanding of exactly what passkeys are and how they work. So what I want to do is go through at a high level discussing how you would end up using passkeys. Now, to be clear, a passkey is essentially nothing more than a token, if you will, that is saved on your device. I'll keep saying device if I happen to say PC. Passkeys work on PCs, on tablets, on mobile devices, and so forth. So the first time you sign in to a service or an account, then you have the option of creating that token on your PC, having it saved in a secure location. In Windows, I believe it's the credential manager, in such a way that it's inaccessible and can then also be used in the future in place of a password or other authentication mechanisms. Now, since the pass keys are stored on your device, I said they were inaccessible. Technically, that's not really true. They are accessible to things like your browser when you're signing in and only after you have proven you are who you say you are. Well, normally that's a password. Well, in this case, it's whatever authentication mechanism you have for Windows or whatever device you're signing in with. For example, once I've set up a passkey with my Google account, now if I need to sign into that Google account from scratch on this PC, I'm asked to enter my PIN for the PC. That allows the browser to then go in, get the appropriate passkey information and exchange that with Google. So the process of logging in is really nothing more than go to the website and the email address, click next, enter my PIN when Windows asks for it, and I'm done. I'm in. Now, I say PIN because that's what I happen to use. There are other techniques that can be used, whatever Windows Hello supports. Uh, so it could be a PIN, it could be facial rec, it could be fingerprint recognition. And I believe it could also be a hardware key. A YubiKey can possibly be used for this as well. But the bottom line here is that rather than having a gazillion passwords for your gazillion accounts, and yes, that's a technical term, uh, you have pass keys for all of these accounts and your one identifying technique for the device on which those are stored. So all I really have to remember is my PIN. And I can get into all of the services that I've set up a passkey on. Now, another piece of misunderstood information is that passkeys are per device. So for example, if I set up a passkey on the PC that I'm using right now, that doesn't help me when I go to my laptop. I have to set up a passkey on that device. That passkey won't work on this device. This device's passkey won't work on that device. So while passkeys are stored securely in the operating system, in reality, they're useless to anybody anywhere other than the machine for which they've been created. Now, I keep saying set up a passkey. That's where the magic lies. To understand this, we need to realize that passkeys are never the only way into your account. 
They are perhaps the most convenient, but in order to set up a passkey on your machine, you must still somehow identify yourself, authenticate yourself with the service that you're wanting to use. Now that service may not have passwords anymore. In fact, I kind of look forward to that day. So how do they authenticate you? Well, they will either, for example, send a code to your cell phone or send an email with a code to your email address or send a pop-up message to one of the other devices on which you are already signed in. Or they may ask for your second factor code if you happen to have second factor turned on. And if passwords are around, yeah, they may actually use your password to authenticate that you are who you say you are. But what that means is all of these techniques continue to work. You use them once. You'll notice that most of them are a little bit more inconvenient, right? Waiting for the code, waiting for the email, doing the thing. But once you've set up a passkey, once you've authenticated yourself and then set up a passkey, then everything becomes a lot easier and just as, if not more, secure. So passkeys are best thought of as a convenience. They get rid of passwords. They make passwords um, optional. And certainly services that currently use passwords could absolutely move to a passwordless future. And they're actually more secure because there's no password to be stolen. Even if there is a data breach somewhere, and even if the service was storing their security information improperly, the information that the hackers would get is useless to them. They can't use it anywhere. It's useless to them. Even if they did get the comp corresponding component of passkeys that's on the server to identify your machine. They simply can't regenerate whatever it is that's on your machine in order to fake a passkey. So using passkeys after they've been set up is really straightforward. You authenticate with the device, not the account. So rather than authenticating with Google, I authenticate with my PC. My PC then, once I've authenticated with it, can then get the passkey out of its secure storage and then exchange that with Google to confirm that, yes, I really am who I say I am. So disaster planning, that actually gets really easy. You don't really have to worry about passkeys. What you have to worry about is that your heirs or whoever would be in charge of getting at your information should you become incapacitated, say, they need to be able to do one or more of those steps that you would use to set up a passkey in the first place. So what that means is they may need access to a device you already have signed into the account. They might have access to the mobile phone number that's associated with the account. They might have access to the email account that's associated with your account. And by email account, I say recovery account because we might be using this to log into an email account. They might have access to your second factor if that's enabled. And if passwords are still being used, sure, make sure they have access to the password. But you'll notice that none of those things that got them into the account required anything that was affected by a passkey. In fact, once they get in, they can choose to set up a passkey of their own on their PC because they've successfully signed in through one of these other techniques, and now they can make it easier. Similarly, if they have access to your Windows PC, for example, then that, in fact, might be enough. Because if they can authenticate using maybe they know your PIN to your PC, then they can now sign in as you and then be able to use the passkeys that, in fact, you have already set up. Now, there is one I'll call it a complication. It's actually a feature to passkeys that I personally am liking and using myself. I've said so far that passkeys are device specific. So earlier I said that the passkey that I would create for my PC in front of me is different than the passkey I would create for the laptop in the other room. However, I lied. I lied because I'm using, actually using one password to remember my pass keys. Just like you might have it save the passwords that you use to sign into various sites, when you create a pass key, 
OnePassword will offer to save that passkey for you. That way, since OnePassword is automatically synchronized across whatever devices you happen to use, that passkey will then indeed be available for other devices to use. So in that scenario, using a password vault that is capable of saving passkeys, you would create a passkey exactly once, save it to your password vault, and then you would be able to sign in to those accounts, those passkey enabled accounts on other devices as long as you can open your password vault. And that too factors in to disaster planning because maybe that's how you give your heirs or responsible parties access to the information that would get them into your account. In my case, like I said, I have it all stored in one password. So if somebody needs to access my stuff, I would give them access to my one password, and then they would have passwords for where passwords are used. They would have pass keys for where pass keys are used and whatever else I happen to store in one password. There's one final thing, and that is that pass keys are per device or per vault, if you will. A vault will allow you to use it on multiple devices. But the bottom line here is that the pass keys that you create are actually remembered by the service you're signing into. What that means is that there is typically a place online at that service where you can list all of the pass keys that have been created. For Google, it's at myaccount.google.com. I have a link in the companion article for this. What's interesting about that is that you then have the option to cancel pass keys for your devices. Here's the scenario. I'm working at my desktop. I'm signed into my Google account, so I have access to this list of pass keys. My laptop gets stolen. Let's say I'm not using one password. So the pass key on the laptop is different than every other pass key I might have for that account. Okay. I come to Google, I say, cancel the passkey that's on that laptop. Now that passkey no longer works. Even though I don't have my hands on the laptop, that passkey has been invalidated. That's another level of improved security from my perspective. So hopefully that helps you understand a little bit of the scenario here. Disaster planning honestly isn't really affected that much by pass keys, as long as whomever you need to give access to is able to access some of these other techniques that you would use to set up a pass key for the first time on any machine. My recommendation is use pass keys whenever available. And if you're a password vault user that happens to have a vault that can save pass keys, that's a decision you can make. I find it very convenient because I travel between multiple computers all the time. Maybe you don't need to. Maybe you want the additional security of maybe having different pass keys on different devices. But pass keys in general are more secure once you understand exactly what it is they're doing and how they keep you safe. For updates, for comments, for more information about this topic, visit askleo.com slash 165726. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is AskLeo.com. Thanks for watching.